Um, is there anybody else out there that would like to? Do this? So we'll just migrate to starts. Um, first question. What is your philosophy of the role of government? Government's role ought to be as limited as possible. And I'd like to take a minute and tell you my philosophy of the role of government in terms of how I think that state, federal, and local government ought to work and how those, how those responsibilities ought to be allocated. If we agree that there are ten things that government ought to do, I'm not saying there are, let's just say ten. If they can, government can do six of them or seven of them at the local level, that's where those need to get done. If government can then do one or two of what's left at the state level, that's where it needs to get done. And the things that can't happen at the local or the state level and that are constitutionally permissible need to happen at the federal level. But our federal constitution ought to be the guide for that. The other thing we have to remember is that that general philosophy of devolving those functions to the most local level possible, that's got to be our guide. I don't think that Republicans or conservatives hate government or are against government. I think what Reagan taught me when I was a kid was that we want that function to happen at the lowest level possible because that's where it's possible for regular people to affect change if it's not going the way they want it to. So I think more than what's the proper role of government, we need to think about what's the proper role of each level and how do they interrelate. The more of them we pull back to the local level, the better off we're going to be. The last thing I want you to know is that as Republicans in the legislature in Austin, we've done a crappy job of that. We've had people run from all over the state that say they're for local control, and then they get to Austin, they think they're the education czar. We've got to quit making those decisions in Austin. When do schools start? Republicans have mandated a school board team building retreat that every school board has to do every year. We did that, people, not the other side. It's time to go have a little common sense and move that power back. Thank you. Charles? I think we all agree that less government is typically a better deal, and we all agree that local control is the key to having less government. We have a representative form of government, which means every voice in this room has the same equality when it goes to the voting booth. What has happened in our representative form of government? So. First of all, we can all agree federal is overreaching and has challenged the state sovereignty, the Republican form of government that we all have been brought to, 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 uh, to know is the way we were set up. But, but here's my bigger picture. A representative form of government that gives you the right to have a voice and make policy and change things and be a part of it has been jeopardized by self-dealing and getting down there and answering to interests that have got more money than anybody. Our water rights in South Plains is currently being challenged at the Supreme Court because of Boone Pickens' ability to buy votes and buy influence. So what I'm telling you is the Republic's representative form of government that we all enjoy and has built this country as what it was intended to be is under attack at every level, but it starts at the politician's level. When you have a politician that is willing to self-deal and self-preserve through the back door. It is so untransparent, you cannot believe the money and the influence that is funneling into these campaigns and the campaign candidates. And over time, in the name of public good, that becomes an incidental benefit that was not their focus. And that's the sad state of where we are as, as, as a political system. So I'm about fixing the representative form of government because that starts at the local level. It is the representative form of government that makes us who we are and gives us the ability to have self-independence. Self We've been enabled a group or generations through our entitlement programs, and it's all in the name of public good. But if you look to who the beneficiaries are, it's lots and lots of other folks other than the ones they intended to serve. So I'm about getting back to the basics and changing how we go about getting government plugged in. Thank you. Well, I'm still the basic person that thinks the role of government is to provide those services that individuals can't provide for themselves. For example, police uh, protection for the areas, the fire department for the protection against home fire issues, and you need those at the local level as much as possible. And I agree with Zach and with Charles that local control is the answer to permit you to have immediate access. You can talk to your city council, you can talk to your fire chief, you can talk to your 
chief of police in the area. And then it moves from there on up to get into broader issues, then it should be state. And if it's a national issue, it should be national. It should not be the national regulating our daily lives. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Question number two, we'll start with you, Charles. Um, <clears throat> describe your understanding of the role of the office you are seeking and comment on the actions you will take to fulfill this role. <clears throat> My experience gives me a fiscal edge when it comes to analyzing budgets. My role is to limit government's role in each of our individual lives. I, I truly believe we can do better for ourselves at the local and individual level than what the government can do. So my experience brings me to a point, because you, here's my issue. You find the money, you find the problems, you fix the problems. You find the problems, you usually find the money. So it all gets back around, are we fiscally conservative with our resources? We need to be good stewards. The role of government, we have, as constituents, allowed it to take more and more and more. <clears throat> they creeped into every aspect of our lives from the federal level to the state level. But what I want to see in my role is doing the things, as Dylan said, that we can't do as individuals. Infrastructure, security, which is tied to the federal. But that's about it. At the end of the day, we are better than the government when it comes to fixing our local problems. So I'm about protecting the individual rights to succeed, go out and do what they want to do, within the boundaries of law and moral law, morally speaking, they need to be in tune with that. The more, it's about bringing the control back to you as an individual and getting government out of the way. I will go down there and support legislation that at any time supports fiscal conservatism. I'm not about new revenue sources. I'm about making sure that what we are spending, we're getting what we desire from that product. I'm about changing the root of the problem. Our entitlement spending, we have done nothing but perpetuate the, the, the enabling, the process of putting people back out there with money after money after money, and we're not solving the root of the problem. We need a cultural shift. We need a cultural change. And we can create a legislative environment that will nurture people back to independence. But we've got to hit those issues head on, and those are not politicians' subjects because they're not sexy, because you will get voted out if you start changing the root or fixing the problem at the root. They just want to keep funding issues just to get 50. <coughs> well, of course, <coughs> District 83 has a strong base of agriculture. Texas Tech, the Texas Tech Med School are a strong base of the educational, the medical communities. And it's been my privilege to do a lot of legislation that's beneficial <coughs> to the agricultural communities. I offered the bill to create the med school, and I was instrumental in getting the funding to build the law school. And those are the things that I think are important. I really think that having constituent contact is one of the most essential things to doing the proper job, because our job, regardless of which of us win this race, our job is to represent District 83 first. And you can't represent it if you don't have a lot of constituent contact. And fortunately for me, I'm at that stage where I can give full-time service to legislating. I don't have to work in any kind of business centers. I respond to the constituents. Example, a lady recently had a driver's license renewal problem. It should not have occurred, but the paperwork got delayed at somebody's desk and somebody went on two weeks vacation. And when I inquired about it, I said, hey, somebody else could put the check mark on there that the insurance is in place. And within an hour and a half, they issued or approved the issue of the license. Those are the items that I work on a great deal, individual constituent work. That's important. Thank you. 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 Thank you